After January 6th, the mainstream media declared the Proud Boys done. But now that same media is reporting on a massive spike in Proud Boys activity across the nation. In this video, we're going to take a look at a number of articles detailing the massive resurgence of this Patriot militia. We're going to look at the media's attempts to try to understand that surge. And stick with me to the very end of this video and I'll show you why that surge in many ways is just beginning. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you. As always, I am your daily fake news antidote as each and every day I provide patriotic analysis to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, if you're looking to lose a few LBs, you're going to love Keto Elevate. If you want the benefits of elevated ketone levels, but without actually having to do the difficult parts of the keto diet, like cut out the carbs and the breads and the like, you're going to love Keto Elevate. I use it myself, tastes great, curbs my appetite for hours. And if you click on that link below right now, you're going to get your very first shipment of Keto Elevate on its way to you at a whopping 51% off the regular price. So don't wait, click on that link below and reap the rewards that Keto Elevate can bring to your life today. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. A number of articles are coming out of late, frankly, rather panicked over the latest surge in activity that we've been seeing from the Proud Boys. Now, if you don't know, the Proud Boys is an organization founded back in 2016 by Gavin McInnes, and their membership has swelled to purportedly over 40,000 across the nation. They have chapters, as I understand, virtually every single state, and they were featured prominently in the first debate between President Trump and sleepy Joe Biden, when Trump refused to denounce them and instead told them to, quote, stand back and stand by. However, since January 6th, the Proud Boys have taken a rather low profile in the national scene. Their leader, Enrique Tarrio, was recently sentenced to five months in prison for burning a BLM flag torn down from a Washington, D.C. church, and several members have been incarcerated for storming the Capitol building. And yet, the Proud Boys appear to be re-emerging as a major political force and left-wing sites such as Salon are taking notice. For example, the Proud Boys have been a prominent presence at protests against mask and vax mandates. They've been seen at rallies in at least five states from L.A. to Columbus, Ohio. They've provided a form of security for the rally's attendees. They've been pushing back against counter-protesters. They've even been, they've been appearing at school board meetings across the country to offer support and protection for parents who are pushing back against CRT. And we've talked on this channel about a surge in membership, particularly among police and law enforcement officials. Police officers in particular have been swelling up the membership ranks of the Proud Boys and other patriot militias across the nation. And this, of course, is in direct response to the various ways in which the political left has thrown law enforcement under the bus and their pro-BLM and defund the police rhetoric and legislation. And so the mainstream media has become, well, rather hysterical over this, which is, of course, a bit odd. After all, these left-wing activists disguised as journalists have absolutely no problem whatsoever with Antifa and their radically violent activities that are spreading throughout the world. They're not just here in the United States. They're becoming an increasingly prominent presence in Europe as well. But this very same media bends over backwards to provide fawning coverage for Antifa and we don't even need to mention the embarrassingly the embarrassing level of shilling that the mainstream media stooped to for the BLM activists a year ago when they were burning down cities and the like. So all this hysteria around the Proud Boys is hypocritically absurd. But at another level, at the analytical level, NPR of all places actually provided some pretty good analysis of the Proud Boys in relation to wider political and cultural shifts that are happening here in the United States, and I would argue increasingly around the world. NPR recently featured a piece detailing what they called, quote, a massive spike of Proud Boys activity, which means that the Proud Boys simply have not seen the kind of setback that many in the media had predicted would happen after January 6. Instead, they are simply, quote, switching up their organizational style. Now they're organizing more at a local level. They're hosting local rallies, or they're joining into other rallies around political flashpoints like critical race theory or anti-masking, close quote. But here's the key quote that I want to focus on here. Quote, 
The profound shift of America's political right suggests that the group has found firm footing among a more mainstream audience, even with Trump out of office, and it won't be disappearing anytime soon. That's some fascinating analysis in terms of understanding the Proud Boys in relation to a wider shift in America's politics. And while NPR analyzes uh, America's political right, I would argue it's a shift in our politics as a whole. What we have to understand, what's going on here, is much bigger than the Proud Boys or right-wing radicalism or racism or any other simplistic explanation that the mainstream media tries to fabricate in an attempt to explain away all of this. And again, you know, one of the most absurd explanations of late that the mainstream media has come up with is this whole notion of black white supremacists, <laughs> right? You remember this with Larry Elder during the California recall, how ultra-left activists disguised as journalists were calling him the black face of white supremacy. And this comes from the fact that these far left activists posing as journalists designate certain movements on the right as white supremacist. And then they're confronted with the rather inconvenient truth that a significant number of non-whites are part of those movements. And then they turn around and concoct this half-cocked theory that non-whites are increasingly representatives of white supremacy. I mean, it reminds me of that joke of the guy who was convinced that he was dead and his wife and his kids kept telling him he's not dead. They point out he can breathe, he can talk, right? And yet they can't convince him that he's not dead. And so his wife takes him to the doctor to try to convince him that he's alive. And the doctor says, no problem, I can, I can convince him in two seconds. And the doctor pulls out some medical books to demonstrate to the man that dead men don't bleed. And after some time, the man agrees. He admits dead men don't bleed. So the doctor then takes the man's hand, pokes the end of his finger with a needle, and the man starts bleeding. And the man looks at, uh, he looks at his finger and he looks at everyone else and he cries out, well, what do you know? Dead men do bleed. <laughs> and this joke brings to light how our presuppositions, our foundational beliefs, exercise profound influence over how we understand the world. The very fact that the media now peddles for us the notion that there are black white supremacists is all you need to know that what they put forward as analysis is actually just a projection of their own presuppositions. So what's really going on here with this escalation of the Proud Boys activity? You will definitely want to check out a video I uploaded on the Proud Boys crushing Antifa in Portland. I have some amazing on-the-ground video from that clash in Portland. It's going to make your day. I'll link it down below for you in the pinned comments section so you can uh, watch it after this one. But in that video, I detail how the Portland police were basically non-existent in that clash. The ultra-left mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, did what he does best, which is to hide under his desk. Portland, as many of you know, is a leftist disaster. And as societal rot continuously creeps over our nation's urban centers, we're seeing here a radical rupture in the confidence that people have in modern law enforcement. And so it's no wonder that more and more people are incre and increasingly more and more law enforcement members, they're looking for alternatives and indeed more authentic ways of providing social protection and security. So with the increasing implosion in confidence and trust in modern policing and law enforcement, we've got to realize that patriot militias become highly attractive alternatives, and they will continue to be so precisely because the defensive and law enforcement structures that have thus far undergirded our society are clearly beginning to crack. And of course, it's not just law enforcement. It's the imploding, imploding loss of faith and confidence in our politicians and our government institutions and our credential class, the imploding trust in the mainstream media. It's an increasing distrust in woke corporations and big tech oligarchs. It's the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of parents pulling their kids out of our public schools. And so we're all looking for alternatives. All of us are looking for alternatives. And patriot militias like the Proud Boys provide precisely the kind of alternative security needed in the midst of the loss of confidence in traditional law enforcement structures. That's why the Proud Boys continue to surge. And that's why they're not going away anytime soon. 
Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out that video. The Proud Boys absolutely crushing Antifa in Portland. It's going to absolutely make your day. So make sure to click on the link, and I'll see you over there.